Hey guys, it's Sandra here. In today's video is a detail all focused around gloss and paint preservation on this 2004 Holden Monaro CD8. So let's start with a bit of information about this car and the goal of this detail. Firstly, this is actually my brother's car. He's had it for quite a few years, in which time these cars have skyrocketed in value. It was initially his daily driver and then became his weekend driver, so it's definitely been enjoyed and driven with about 150,000 kilometers on the clock. But after COVID restrictions hit and we weren't legally allowed to drive for recreational purposes, he decided to deregister and just store it rather than paying over a grand each year to register and road insure what he couldn't even drive. So this was really its first outing in quite some time and will actually be the first time this car undergoes any comprehensive detailing since he's owned it and potentially since it was built. So all things considered, the paint isn't too bad for an 18 year old vehicle with decent mileage that's just been maintained. Now, knowing my brother, who is a car purist, is not one to care too much about a vehicle that ages normally, meaning that things like minor chips and random scratches aren't a big deal to him and just normal and appropriate signs of an older original vehicle. And he's certainly not too keen on removing significant amounts of clear coat in order to get the paint looking near perfect. What he would like is the oxidation that's starting to give the red paint a pinkish look gone, the finest swirl marks removed and some added gloss to make a pop without sacrificing significant amounts of clear coat thickness in the process. So this is what I mean when I say that information is key for not only safely and effectively detailing a car, but also for meeting and addressing your customers particular needs and wants and providing them with the pros and cons of pursuing different levels of work so that they can make an informed decision. So in a nutshell, this detail will be firstly about giving the vehicle a good thorough clean and decontamination. Secondly, about doing some light polishing and addressing mold oxidation and swirls. And thirdly, about trying to amplify gloss and saturation as much as possible all the while preserving as much of the original paint as possible. So let's get to it. Starting with the wheels, I filled up my bucket with a variety of wheel brushes and mitt and foamed it up with a decontamination car soap for a little extra cleaning power. It was a hot day, so sometimes I pre-wet panels and trims to stop the chemicals from drying up too quickly. I used a tire cleaner for the tires and wheel well areas and started with a pre-treatment of a wheel cleaner for the rims while I gave the tires and wheel wells a good scrub down. The whole wheel area was then given a good pressure rinse down before reapplying my wheel cleaner and then using a variety of brushes to manually clean the inner and outer part of the rims. So basically, this is a safe but good thorough cleaning process to get the wheels ready for some added protection.
After a final rinse, I applied a layer of a touchless sealant as some primary protection and added gloss, but I'll be layering some more sealants on the wheels to further boost gloss later on. Next up was a pre-soaked foam treatment using a slightly alkaline leaning strip car wash detergent to start softening and loosening the dirt and grime so that as much of it can be removed in the next pressure rinsing stage in a safe touchless manner. The foam was allowed to dwell for as long as possible but without starting to dry and then I used a very methodical pressure rinsing technique to remove as much of the physical dirt as possible. Once most of the lighter and less stubborn dirt and contamination was removed in the previous step, it was time to give the vehicle a more thorough and physical safe hand car wash. I used the same strip car wash detergent in my bucket with a microfiber washing pad, started at the top of the vehicle and worked my way down and around the car section by section, rinsing my wash mitt frequently throughout the process and then using a second wash mitt for the lower and dirtier car panels.
After another rinse of the car, I could visually see quite a few tar deposits on many of the lower sections of the panels. So I then used a tar remover to treat and remove those particles. It was sprayed directly over the tar deposits, allowed to dwell for a few minutes to start dissolving them and then I used a microfiber cloth to further wipe and remove them. After the tar remover treatment, I did some further inspecting and could feel a light to moderate amount of environmental fallout mostly on the horizontal panels that would need removing before any paint correction process. I used an iron and traffic film remover clay lubricant to pre-treat those panels and start to break down those particles and then followed up with a claying mechanical process to physically lift and remove those iron particles before rinsing the section down and continuing this process on all the other affected panels and trims. Around some of the more intricate grills and trims I could still see a little stubborn dirt that needed some extra attention to be removed. So we used a 1 to 10 dilution of my strip car wash detergent just in a spray bottle with a soft brush to help agitate and remove that dirt as a final cleaning step. The vehicle was then given a final rinse down followed by a safe towel dry and a final blow dry to remove some of the trapped water in preparation for the next pre-correction steps. Thank you. 
With the vehicle washed, decontaminated and dry, the next step was an isopropyl alcohol dilution wipe down to remove any remaining chemical residue, water streaks or spots. This is all about having the paint and trims as perfectly clean, bare and dry as possible, ready for pre-correction inspections, measurements, masking and then ultimately paint correction. So in other words, it's all about being able to collect the very best data about the paint and not have anything interfering with that correction process. Now, all in all, the paint thickness was measuring an average of about 130 microns or so, and most readings were within 30 or so microns of that average reading, which is fairly typical with these cars in my experience. The only panel that was giving some inflated readings was the boot lid that was spiking in the mid 200s, but I already knew that that panel had been previously repainted according to my brother but the rest of the paint seemed fairly consistent with no warning signs or issues, which was great. With the paint completely clean and bare, this is really the time you can honestly and adequately inspect and assess its condition. Now, first and foremost, there's definitely quite an even and consistent amount of fine swirl marks all over each panel. Secondly, I'd say the next most prominent defect is some light to moderate oxidation, which has had a dulling, hazing and created a pinkish effect over this bright red paint. There's also some isolated deeper scratches here and there scattered throughout, and the paint has some mild water spotting, but mostly on the glass and just a few other panels. All in all, it's not overly terrible, but it's certainly not all that great either. And I do think that some light correction work should make quite a huge improvement. The last step before paint correction was masking the plastic and rubber trims in order to protect them and my polishing pads during the correction process. Okay, so let's do a couple of test sections on the paint to see what's going to be the best way forward to achieve the goal of removing some minor defects and more importantly, boosting gloss, which as I mentioned is the main goal here. For a first test section, I used an all-in-one primer polish with a light cutting foam pad and a 15mm cordless polisher. I set my machine speed to 5 and working a section about 6 times the size of my pad, I did 3 passes in total using moderate pressure and a slow arm movement.
because this is an all-in-one polish, I won't be performing an IPA wipe down as that'll remove the polish's filling ability and degrade its finish. So I'll just be gently wiping off the excess residue, removing my tape line and evaluating the results with a good handheld light. Now what you'll hopefully see in the footage is that pretty much all that dull and pinkish oxidation has been removed along with all the finer swirls and the gloss and saturation is actually quite fantastic and near perfect. What's really remaining in the finish is the deeper scratches and fine pitting defects that would require a heavier cutting process to remove. Now just to compare, I performed a second test section using a standard medium compound and intermediate foam pad with pretty much the same method and technique. Now the real difference here is that Shoalist 20 Black isn't an all-in-one polish, so it won't fill in any haze or defects, and the blue Shine Mate pad is a little less aggressive in removing defects than the previous Lake Country one, but tends to finish a touch better. Now looking at and comparing the two sections, I can see that as far as defect removal or masking goes, there's not much in it from one section to another, though I would say that the section on the right is just a touch better in that area. But the greater difference here is the finish. The first section on the left is a little darker, clearer and richer with a glossier finish, while the second section on the right has some pretty obvious haze and micro marring meaning that on this particular paint, it just hasn't finished all that well. So what does this tell me? Firstly, this is without a doubt a soft paint, as I know that S20 and the blue Shine Mate pad will tend to finish almost perfectly on all hard to medium paints. And I also know that CarPro Essence doesn't cut that much, so unless it's quite a soft paint, there's just no way it would have removed or filled in so much of the oxidation and swirls. Now in truth, I actually did a few more test sections off camera prior to these, just to figure out the best way forward. And what I found was that nothing but a fine polish would finish well on this paint, and nothing but a heavier compound and coarser pad selection would remove substantially more of the defects. So basically what this revealed was two feasible options. Go light and concentrate on minor defect removal, boosting gloss and retaining clear coat, or go hard and remove substantially more defects and clear coat and then follow up with a lighter combination in a second step to restore gloss and clarity. Trying to pursue a middle ground in this particular case didn't seem to render substantially better results and would just sacrifice a little more clear coat and create a lot more work for very little return based on my testing. In this particular case, it was actually quite an easy decision to make going with the first lighter combination as I knew that gloss and paint preservation were my two main goals and removing more clear coat to remove the deeper defects wasn't something I was going to pursue for this car and its owner. Now going back and re-inspecting the first test section with CarPro Essence and the Blue Lake Country Pad, I could see that around the panel edges and body lines were where most of the defects hadn't been removed. So what I did was grab my smaller 3 inch polisher and go over those body lines and edges in order to get a slightly better result. I know it may be hard to see in the footage but this bonnet has lots of curves and crevices that just make it hard for a larger pattern polisher to achieve great correction on those more dramatic peaks and valleys where a smaller polisher is just simply more effective and importantly, also much safer. The trade-off is that it simply takes much more time. But you'll hopefully see that it's well worth it, as the combination of using a smaller polisher for the more intricate areas and a larger polisher for the flatter areas has resulted in the defect removal going from about 50% to 80% plus without having to get more aggressive and remove greater amounts of clear coat. All it's allowed me to do is get a far more consistent defect removal result from edge to edge. So starting with the bonnet, I began by doing my more time consuming edge and body line work using my smaller three inch and sometimes even two inch polishers and then followed up with my larger five inch pattern machine making sure to overlap my edge and flat work for the best and most consistent result possible.
As always guys, I'll let you judge the results for yourselves. But what I can say is that no, it's not a high-end finish in regards to defect removal as you can still see a moderate amount of deeper scratches and paint pitting. But as far as saturation and reflective gloss goes, it's about as good as I've ever seen or produced as the bonnet just looks like a freshly coated candy apple. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the glass had a few water spots and just a little lack of clarity and luster that I know from previous experience, a light polish can really help to clean that up and give it a new lease on life. I also know that CarPro Essence tends to work especially well because it can also fill in some very fine swirls and defects to improve it even further. So once again, I used the very same polish pads and machines to polish the glass and improve its finish to match the rest of the car. Detailing is about the details guys and getting the paint looking fantastic to be then let down by the glass or other trims that just look hazed and weathered detracts from the overall look of the finished vehicle and doesn't let all the hard work you've put into the paint really shine through.
For the rest of the paint correction process, I think it's pretty much all self-explanatory and was done in the same way I explained earlier on the bonnet, using my smaller polisher for the edge work and my larger polisher for the flat work. I guess what I can add here is that although it's hard to keep track of time when you're filming and detailing at the same time, I'd say the polishing alone was a good solid two days work, maybe 15 to 20 hours. Some areas were definitely worse than others, like the rear bumper and side skirts, that I ended up going over twice to get a more respectable result. All the clear plastics were also polished and Carpro Essence was left to cure overnight to set and harden before the next protection and enhancement stages. Next up was finishing the wheels. I started by applying a satin tie dressing to each tire wall and working it in for a good couple of minutes before allowing the dressing to dry and level. After that, I began by applying Shell Concepts W6 Black Sealant to the outer face of the rims to further protect and enhance the wheels that already had a previous layer of CarPro Hydro 2 Light Sealant that I applied during the initial washing stage. Through the morning. 
I gave W6 Black a couple of hours to set and partially cure before adding a third and final layer of Nova Luster spray coating to further boost gloss and protection levels. Once again guys, I know it may be hard to see in the footage, but it was really just amazing how much richer and glossier the wheels looked after that process, so I really think it was well worth the time and effort. The next finishing stage was dressing, protecting and enhancing the textured plastic and rubber trims. For this, I once again used Envionics. I know it's labelled as a dedicated tyre dressing, but I've used it enough on various plastic and rubber trims to know it works amazingly great on those trims as well. So using a foam applicator, I took my time and thoroughly massaged the dressing into all those black trims for several minutes to restore their look back to a nice factory matte to satin finish. Now about halfway through the previous paint correction stage, I stopped to do a little experimenting with further sealing and enhancing the paint to extract as much gloss and richness as possible in the finish. Now as you may know, Capra Essence that I used to polish the paint already leaves a fantastic looking sealant behind. But I've also been playing around with Shoal Concepts W6 Black since it came out a couple of months ago and I have to say it's one amazing looking sealant and I'm sure a few of you already know just how amazing Nova Lustre looks and feels. So we tried a three layer system on this paint that you already saw me do on the car wheels which is actually why I used it on the wheels as well. The really important thing to take note of here is that you need to allow for curing times for at least a couple of hours in warmer weather or more like three to four hours in normal to cooler environments or you will have user experience bonding and finishing issues if you layer these products too quickly based on my own testing. So Carpro Essence was allowed to cure overnight and Shell Concepts W6 was given two to three hours to cure before the final layer of luster that was applied over the whole car. It's sometimes hard to capture on camera what something really looks like in person, but I can tell you that this three part layering system looked absolutely spectacular on this paint and you'll hopefully be able to see that for yourselves once the whole car is completed. Now as far as the application of W6 Black goes, this is in particular one of those sealants that you want to apply sparingly or you will pay for it during the wipe off. 
Also, make sure you work it in well and you should start to see it get a little more transparent and almost disappear as a sign you're applying it correctly. In most cases, it's ready to be wiped down in just a few short minutes and in hot environments, it's ready to be wiped down in about a minute or so. So it's quite a fast bonding and flashing car sealant. It does have a little grip to it at first, which is normal and just part of its character and user experience. But as long as you use it sparingly and don't let it sit for too long, it's not all that bad. Just not as easy and seamless as some others to use. But the reason I've come to really love it is all about its outstanding darkening, saturation and filling abilities in which it's really impressive in those areas. So section by section, all the car paint and clear plastic trims were given a layer of W6 to further boost, protect and enhance the finish. After W6 Black was given a few hours to set and cure, the final step was a finishing layer of Nova Luster. The spray coating was directly applied to a small section, spread in with a first microfiber cloth and then immediately buffed strict free with a second cloth. The thing about Luster is that it just creates insane amounts of reflective gloss. In fact, it's really up there with the most gloss of any product I've ever used. Now I'd say W6 has a little more darkening and saturation effect, but gloss and slickness is Luster's greatest features, and the two together are just amazing as a combination in all the testing I've done to date. So in a nutshell, I think they really complement each other, but you can be the judge of that in the final shots of the car. So let's wrap up this video. I actually really enjoyed this job. There's something just so rewarding about detailing a solid bright red paint that I forget about until I do it again. And it just makes me smile when I stand back and look at it pop like nothing else. I think I also enjoyed the fact that it was my brother's car and it felt great handing it over to him and seeing his reaction. I apologize guys, I simply forgot to record the reaction. It was a long week, but he was wrapped with the result. But I think what I enjoyed most was having that direction and clarity of just focusing in on gloss and paint preservation rather than everything else. 
So no, the paint wasn't near perfect. The paint protection wasn't the most durable available, and yes, more could have been done to get the car looking even better. But man, that gloss was just insane. And if I had to guess, I'd say I barely removed more than a micron or two of paint. So, I don't know. Did I accomplish the mission of preserving the paint while still breathing some new life into this amazing car? I'd like to think so. I think I'll leave it there guys and if you enjoyed this video and would like to say thanks and help support future content, you can do so by buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash ccad in which I'll have a link to in the description box and thank you everyone for the support so far. As always, I really hope you guys enjoyed and found this video useful. Please share it with others, give it a like and comment below to show your support for this channel and I'll see you guys soon. Oh, oh.